What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate, and today I'm gonna show you how to make these super sick, glowing hand-drawn animations. Now, I posted this on Reddit a little earlier this week, and I had no idea what to expect. I wasn't even sure if you guys wanted to learn how something like this was made, but you completely blew me away with the comments and sent some very convincing upvotes. So I know you're excited, I am too. Let's get right into it, let's go. First thing I'm gonna talk about is gear. Now you can do this effect without any plugins or accessories, but I personally use a tablet and paint and stick, which is a plugin that I talk about in a video called the top 10 After Effects plugin, shameless plug, watch that video later. So to do this effect, you can use a mouse, but I personally would recommend using a tablet. I use the Wacom Intuos Pen and Touch tablet. My girlfriend bought this for me on my 18th birthday. Thanks babe. And it was, I think, $100 around that time, which was a pretty affordable investment, especially seeing how I get these customizable hotkeys, which makes changing the frames back and forth a whole lot easier. And this pressure sensitive pen, which makes drawing so much smoother. So yeah, I would recommend it if you can. If not, I also did the same effect without anything but a mouse. And here's kind of what that video looked like. But I'm gonna show you how to make this one instead. So you can do this effect with the default brush system in After Effects, but I personally use Paint and Stick for it's easy to set up onion skin. If you don't know what onion skin is, it's basically the protective covering of onions. <laughs> and it also happens to refer to an effect that lets you see multiple frames at once. So I use this definitely when getting a sense of rhythm and reference. And I'll show you more about what I'm talking about inside the program. So let's hop right in. Ooh. All right, now onto After Effects. Wait, we have to find a clip that we actually want first. To practice on, I'm going to search for a swaggy dance vid, but you can use whatever clip you want. There are some things that I look for that will make it easier to edit. One, a super dope song because music touches the soul. Two, a super steady camera so I can selectively add animated camera shakes. And three, an aesthetically pleasing video because I'm going to be staring at it for a while and I want it to look good. Thrust, thrust, switch. Thrust, thrust, switch. All right, this one looks almost perfect, but I'm feeling lucky and think I can find a better one. Okay, cool. I think this clip works perfectly, hits all the checkboxes, now let's get this into After Effects. So the first thing I'm gonna do is save this project. I'm gonna title it, calling it doot doo doo. And now that we have a new project set, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new composition. I'm eventually gonna make a short comp at 15 seconds or so for Instagram, but now I'm gonna leave the time a little longer because I like to skim around. Super important to note, most of this is frame by frame, and I did this in 24 frames a second, which is less than 30 frames per second, but still a lot. That basically means every one second is 24 drawings, and this animation is 15 or so seconds long. You can do the math. Keep this in mind when selecting a clip to animate, you're gonna want the most impact per second since it takes a decent amount of time drawing 24 frames. The higher the frame rate, the smoother your animation, but I don't recommend anything higher than 24. 30 is cool, but hardly noticeable, and 60 frames per second is just insane. You can actually get away with lower frame rates like 12, which can make your video look like a stop motion, which can also look pretty cool and save you a huge amount of time. So feel free to experiment. This effect is all about having fun with it. So once you have a composition made, the first thing to do is create a new layer that will hold all of the drawings and effects. If you're not using paint and stick, you can make a black solid or duplicate your original footage and draw directly on it. I'm going to select the paint tool and choose my brush size and paint and stick. You can make this whatever size as long as it's something you enjoy. 
Next, we're gonna start drawing frame by frame. You don't have to worry about being perfect because this will be on for only one frame, which is 1 24th of a second. And honestly, the little squiggles give it a bit of personality. Right now, I love this movement and I'm thinking I'm gonna really quickly enhance it with simple shapes and lines. At the top, you'll see every time I move forward a frame, there is a window that pops up and I'm pressing actually the hotkey page down, which moves forward one frame. The orange overlays you see here are actually the past frames I've drawn, which is the onion skin I was talking about earlier. So right now, everything's looking good and all I'm doing is outlining the bottom of her shoe up until this point, which is when I notice that her foot takes off the ground and a huge distance has been covered. So what I'm gonna do is fill in that space that her foot once was. This actually brings me to my first black mixture technique, motion trails. I love this effect because it makes simple moves feel like they have energy in them. Motion trails are pretty much what you probably would have seen if you played games like Mega Man or Street Fighter or even watch anime fights. When I was younger, I would watch stick fights all day and I just loved the stick fight animations from Turquoise. This one is Shock where you can see these simple trail lines add so much energy to this fight. When I was a kid, I had probably this guy's reaction to it. <laughs> this is crazy. They're really easy to make and I'll show you how. Basically, I'm looking for wherever her shoe once was and I'm filling in that space. I'll start at the base of her shoe and as she picks her foot up, I'll fill in the distance she's traveled. As a few more frames go by, I'll slowly start to push in the drawing and catch up with her foot. I'm really just guessing here and I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I'm going to keep going and once I'm at a decent place where the doubt begins to kick in and I question if this is even working, I'm going to take a break and check back on the previous frames by doing a RAM preview. This looks good enough, so let's continue. I'm going to speed this part up so you guys can follow along as I finish up this Moten trail and everything is going smooth until BAM! I notice she's about to put her foot down and I want this trail to end soon. This time, I'm gonna do something different by splitting this shape into smaller blob shapes. That's actually the second black mixture technique I'm gonna talk about, smoke or fluid decay. It's a super simple effect that goes a long way. All you have to do is make these split off into smaller, smaller blobs over time. I'm also shifting them slightly to the right and up as I draw them so they feel like they're floating away. Motion trails and smoke decay can combine for a really powerful effect. I'm gonna quickly show you both of those techniques again, which I do along her profile. Again, all I'm doing is drawing a line and filling in the distance she travels from that line. Not too difficult, right? Eventually, when she's about to stop, I split the motion trail into smaller blobs that get smaller over time. Right here is what that looks like. I actually ended up scrapping this part because it, I thought it distracted too much from the bottom foot move and it looked a little cheesy here. Important tip, don't overdo it. Luckily, we're in After Effects and changes like these can be reversed easily. I got to this point where I have a ball of energy that I'm thinking about and putting that in her hand from one of those little smoke decays earlier. And so one of the things I'm gonna do is just drag that motion up, create a motion trail, and at the point where it looks like she throws something down on the ground, I'm gonna draw in this ball that's gonna turn into an explosion effect. And the way that I do that is just by having it hit and turn into a smoke decay with basically the same principles that we did earlier. So again, I'm gonna move forward even faster now as we get into more motion trails and more smoke decays. Right when I get to a point where I think I'm about tired of animating is when I take a quick break and do a quick RAM preview, seeing just to make sure how these animations are playing out. It's very important to look back at your work because sometimes you may make something that you think is gonna look cool and then you go ahead and play it out and it looks completely awful and then you just gotta erase it and take a break from After Effects. Maybe go for a walk, maybe play with your dog and then come back to the program and make something dope. So yeah, even though this is a time lapse and it looks like it's all in one take, I actually had to take multiple breaks I ate some pizza and I came back to this. I think for the most part you guys understand what I'm talking about here with motion trails and smoke decay. So I'm gonna speed up this video and let you just take a look at the different ways that I accentuate little parts of motion for a really big impact. Okay, so I want to go a little bit more in depth into the things that you guys specifically requested in the comments and in order to do that, 
I'm gonna make another video. So this one is gonna be part one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see part two, in which I'm gonna go over things like the explosion effect, the camera shake, and even just a little bit more about tracking and how to get really clean composites inside of After Effects. So make sure you stick around and I'll catch you on the next one. Did you